Hello there, I'm Black Bright, I'm broadcasting out of the UK and if it's the first time you're coming to my channel, please subscribe, and press the thumbs up or the thumbs down and share if you find the content interesting. Now recently I was looking at an article, the Home Office are using secret al algorithms in order to siphon out people of a certain race and people of a certain age. And apparently they've been, they're coming down hard on the Home Office about this. Um, the Home Office are claiming, oh, it's not nothing to do with that. It's to do with, you know, speeding up the process, blah, blah, blah. But it's, a, it's very similar to the face recognition algorithm, which is biased to um, process black faces over white faces. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking... It's a part of the unconscious bias, isn't it? The implicit bias. Because that's what it's got to do with. Because if you think about unconscious bias, these people don't even know that they are being biased when they're doing it because it's so deeply embedded. Now, we can call out people as being racist and we, un we don't understand why they won't admit to being racist and all this kind of stuff because there is something called unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is when you're actually raised in a certain environment. Now, supposing you were brought up around white people, everybody you knew was white, your teachers taught you white subjects, and the only um, media that you saw in this particular town was white people. You would then be very wary about anybody that looked different from yourself. And similarly, if the tables were turned and black, you didn't see anything else but black people, you would have your reservations about anyone who didn't look like you. You'd be suspicious. And that's what unconscious bias is, is to do with how your mind is being conditioned growing up, the culture, what you've been exposed to. And I was thinking, um, when, after I was reading about unconscious bias, I don't think unless the person is conscious enough and willing enough to reverse that programming, that is how they're going to stay. I don't think that you, you can reverse racism without challenging the unconscious bias because if that unconscious bias is latent is dormant it's not even dormant because it's active and it influences every single it influences your actions whether your actions are fair are, are fair or unfair now i don't know if you've ever been in an interview situation or you don't even have to be in an interview situation but I'll use an interview situation just for this to point, you know, to make a point. When, when a panel um, is sitting behind a desk waiting for the candidate to come in, they're looking for something, they're looking for someone who's going to fit in with the organisation. They're looking for somebody who they may have something in common with. They're looking for what they call mini-me's. So when that person comes in, to the um, interview room in that 10 second gap they've already made assumptions about that individual and a lot of those assumptions pro will probably be wrong and the thing is is that they call that affinity bias if you're looking for people who are like you and you can only relate to people who are like you that's why you have institutional racism because the people recruit people who are like themselves and so that culture is embedded becomes embedded now supposing someone comes in for the interview and the panel is um, let's say let's forget the white people for a while and let's say the panel is Asian and an Asian lady comes in and she behaves in all the ways the predictable ways I don't know what they are that an Asian person would 
you know, that the Asian panel would find attractive because she knows them, she's familiar with them, she knows what to say. Similarly, if it was a black panel, you'd have some kind of affinity with the black panelists. And if it's a white panel, same, the same thing applies. Now, if it's a, um, a white panel, a predominantly white panel, and a black person goes in, unless that black person is um, has something in common with them, maybe they went to the same college, maybe they trained at the same hospital, maybe they went to the same school, maybe they, you know, in talking, they find out that they know the same people, then maybe because they have that thing in common, that black woman may get the job. And they call that infinity bias because somebody else could come in afterwards. It could even be a white woman. And if she comes in and they don't know anything about her and she doesn't, she looks quite, um, she doesn't look like she'd fit in with the people who are in the group, even though she's white, she probably wouldn't get the job. You know, and somebody who's old, when they're, when they're um, interviewing, they have this vision of who they want in their organization. So they'll be looking at age, they'll be looking at gender, they'll be looking at appearance, they'll be looking at the way you speak, they will be looking at your background. And they'll be looking at all of those things that they have something in common with and they'll make that decision. And that is what you call unconscious bias because they don't do it deliberately. They don't even realize that that's what they're doing. But if that is how unconscious bias works, how do you eradicate racism? You can't. Because the, uh, the major I'm not talking about the overt racism, the ones, the Ku Klux Klan and all of those, because they know, they've already conditioned themselves that they don't like um, black people and stuff like that. But you have people who really do not know that they are making rash judgments or, you know, illogical um, assumptions about people. And they don't just make it against black people, they make it against their own people. You know, I sit again, I sit next to somebody and, um, well, we was doing this unconscious bias test. It was a part of mandatory training. And there's three typical, um, I shouldn't say typical because that's my unbiased, that is my unconscious bias kicking in right now in front of you. Because the... Um, the girl is quite, um, oh, how do I do this? I don't even know how to describe it without, you know, without sounding biased. But the, the woman has worked her way up. And she, um, <laughs> it's really difficult because you try, you know, you can be shot in the head if you say the wrong things. But anyway, um, she does have her biases, and I know she has her biases, and she's one of these people who don't like blacks, but I'm all right kind of thing. I don't like the rest of them, but you're all right, you know that type. Anyway, she comes up to me, and I said, I said to, she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing the unconscious bias um, training that we, that's mandatory. I said, have you done yours? Because I'm thinking it might help her out a bit. Oh, I couldn't be asked about that. She said, I've got somebody else to do it. But it's funny because there's three people in her office that are similarly minded who make exceptions with certain black people. And neither of them did the test. They got somebody else to do it for them. Now, it'd be very interesting because I've got somebody else who works in that, in, in, in my little corner. And I... I've got a funny feeling she won't feel comfortable taking that test either. Because there's something about it that kind of makes you self-reflect. Now, I know I have unconscious bias. I know I do. Because I will look at, you know, even something simple like Love Island. I look at Love Island and I look at one of the guys and I will already make my assumptions just by his appearance. And then halfway through the show, I think, oh, well, he's not that bad. He's not like how I thought he would be. He's, you see what I mean? He's proved me wrong. 
And so we, we all have our unconscious biases and it's not, it's just about being aware of it. Because until you are aware of it and you can kind of talk yourself out of it, you will continue to have it. Now, you'll have to want to challenge your unconscious bias. If you notice that if you see, if a, as black people, if you see white people and you make assumptions, you have to kind of think, well, maybe I should get to know them first. And with black people, with white people, they need to do the same thing. They need not to make assumptions. I mean, we have an issue with the police, with their unconscious bias and their overt bias and their covert bias, all of them. Whereas I don't think even if they went on training, I don't think it'd make any difference to the way they work because some of them have gone into the force to exercise that power and to misuse that power. So there are certain people who are not trainable and who are not interested in trainable. And it would have to be a conscious, a real conscious effort. It's really difficult. You'd have to continually be catching yourself when you make an unconscious, um, when you when you stereotype based on a certain um, criteria. So um, what else was I going to say about that? They had some lovely names with, they had affinity bias, which is mini me. And it's uh, when you, when you're biased in favour of people who look like you. And they had another one, but I left my piece of paper at work. I can't remember what, what it was, but it's all very interesting. Um, what else? Um, oh yeah, unconscious bias is another word for prejudice. We used to call people prejudice. Now we call it unconscious bias or implicit bias. They always make up these fancy names. It's just a set of assumptions, actually. Um, but it's funny because when I started off my magazine called Black Bright News, it was actually to negate the negative stereotype. That's why I did it. But I didn't even realise that, you know, it was unconscious bias. And I didn't realise also that if you're raised in a certain way with certain thoughts and cer certain social conditioning, it's not easy to turn that around. So it's not easy to turn racists into non-racists unless they want to change. Because they they have they, they don't know any different. I mean, if it's all up here and it's all to do with growing up as a young person. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does, because it's not. And I'm not, talk like I say, I can't generalise here. I'm not talking about all racists. I'm not talking about the overt racists. I'm, you know, like sometimes when you say, you hear people say, oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not racist. I've got black friends. Or, you know, oh, no, I ain't got no problem with you. You, the, your kind. I like coloured people. Those are the people who may have unconscious bias. It's not the ones who are aware and who know their limitations and who know their prejudices. It's the ones who do not think that they are. And then, you know, you'll have people chastising them and saying, oh, how can you not know you're being racist? How can you not know what you're saying is racist when they've made an assumption? But it is to do with unconscious bias. It's not always deliberate. They really, some of them really do not know that that is, that what they're saying or what they're doing has racial connotations or implications. Um, hmm. Yeah, they were talking about um, the, what do you call it? you know, the hostile environment policy, even that, that's filled with unconscious bias, even though the people who authorised it are probably consciously biased. But the, um, the bias in the actual policy is implicit, you know. And when they're talking about, you know, when, you're, when you go for jobs, and they're actually looking to see if people have black sounding names. Sometimes I've often 
well, not so much now because I'm not looking for jobs now. But I remember calling up and saying, you know, I'm really interested in your company. Um, and this was the time when you didn't need CVs and you didn't need all this history about yourself that that could negate bias. I mean, they say, you know, your age, you don't have to put your age on the document. But then once they find out what school you went to and how long ago you went to school, it all checks out and they're able to tell your age. But I remember I used to call up and I'd say, you know, I'm really interested in a job. Um, do you have any available? And they'd tell, yes, do, you know, do come along. And, you know, I've got a name after a film star that's a white name. So um, they'll do come along. And when I came there, they'd actually say, oh, I didn't know you were black. You don't sound black. I used to think, what does a black person sound like? In my, in my head. Mind you, as a black woman, I can hear voices and I know they're black. I'm not talking black with an accent. I'm talking about black English. I can still tell they're black. And I remember when I was in the States and I all I heard was American voices, American voices. And I was in the canteen and I heard two um, English voices. I knew they were black but they were English. And I don't think it would have mattered at that point whether or not they were black or white or what colour they were. But the affinity was, oh, somebody who's English, somebody who's like me. That's where my affinity bias kicked in because I had been among people who I didn't feel I had much in common with. And so when I heard that English tone, it was just like, oh, I feel safe. I feel like I'm at home, you know, automatic trust, everything, whether or not they were trustworthy or not. They just happened to be trustworthy and they happened to be lifelong friends. I'm still friends with them now. But the fact of the matter is it was just hearing that voice. And that is what happens in unconscious bias when they're doing those interviews and when they're dealing with people they're looking for people who are like themselves like they call mini me it's called affinity bias they're looking for people like themselves and when people are not like themselves they're very skeptical they're very wary and the more the more alien you are to them the more you are not like them the more scared, the more frightened, the more intimidated, the more they don't like that person. So you can imagine a white person when a black person is totally the opposite of who they are and they cannot see visually anything in common because that person is black and they are white. What could they possibly have in common? So when they have that unconscious bias they don't think oh she speaks our language i went to see um oh sorry to, to um, change the the, the the train of thought i went to see small island at the national theater um a couple of days ago and even though the man was speaking to them in the english she saw a black face and she said why don't you speak to me in english what, what language are you speaking? But the man was speaking to her in English. But because he was black, as far as she's concerned, the walls go up, the stereotype kicks in, and so does the bias. So she couldn't see that he was actually talking to her in English, even though he was. He did have, I admit, he did have a slight accent, but not a distinguishable accent that you couldn't. Mind you, if you go to America and you say tomato, what do we say in English? Tomato. Yeah, we say tomato in English and they say tomato. They don't seem to be able to interpret that a tomato is a tomato. It's like, unless you say it their way, they cannot, they will not understand what you're saying. So it's a similar premise. You can't, it's, 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 see, it should be straightforward, but it's not because the blinkers, the blinders are on. 
And when someone is different from you, sometimes unless you're eager to learn and unless you, you go outside the box, unless you're curious and unless you are one of those people who are self-aware and who want to know about the different things in this world, you are going to stay in that little um, box of yours and you're not going to want to go outside that box and learn about anybody else. You're not interested because you're only interested in people who look like you and sound like you. So I hope that has been, that is a reasonable account of what unconscious bias is. Like I said, I, I don't even think with training you can eradicate it. I think that people have to consciously want to do it on their own will, not because of they're in, a, in, a, in an organisation that is training them on it and that it's mandatory. I think an individual like will have to want to do it. Like I said, like I said, those people who were supposed to be doing it, they gave it to somebody else to do because they didn't feel comfortable doing it. They didn't feel as though they could pass it. They didn't even want to make the attempt to do it. So, and it's interesting because I had to, I, I decided to do the test um, to find out if I had unconscious bias, but every single page was about gay people. And I'm like, after about the 10th page of asking me whether or not I had issues with gay people, I thought, is that the only, is that the only bias there can possibly be? What about gender bias? What about age bias? What about colour bias? I didn't understand why they kept on going on about gay bias. But now, on reflection, it was probably to see how much patience I had to finish the bloody test. It was pages of it. I just couldn't be asked. I just came out of it. I thought, but maybe there was some unconscious bias there. And maybe by doing that test, it was showing that I had unconscious bias because it was asking me the same thing over and over again in different ways. And I just thought, I haven't got time for this. So, yeah, we all have unconscious bias. And as long as we can recognise it, that's fine. It's not a bad thing. It's just that when it's used destructively, it can be bad. And it's just about being aware. And if you do have you have it in if you do have unconscious bias it's knowing where it's come from and that you may not be aware for aware of it but now you know how it works you might be able to catch yourself when you kind of look at somebody and you think oh I bet they're like this or I bet that person is doing this and you have that you know it's just stereotyping really and you have your you make your prejudices based on that stereotype and that's all for now bye bye